I want to just share a little bit about what makes a champion. You know, we all will uh, face great challenges uh, to become what God wants us to be. Anybody ever known, you know, a diamond, it goes through some stuff to become a diamond and different things go through a process to become what God wants them to be. And I believe that a lot of us go through things that, you know, like in the quarry where, where God fashions us, shapes us, uh, breaks down some strongholds, whatever it might be. But I believe that God's got a purpose for us. And of course, what God wants us to be is champions. God wants to be overcomers. The Bible says to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me upon my throne. Many times he says to him who overcomes. And you've got to learn to overcome so that we can become the champions. Sometimes, you know, uh, when the enemy comes, and how many people know that the enemy comes? He comes to rob, to kill, and to destroy. The Bible's very, very plain. It speaks a lot about the devil. The devil goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And, you know, we in Christianity, somehow or other, we get this false uh, opinion sometimes that, you know, because now I'm born again and I'm a child of God, that, that, I, that nothing will go wrong in my life, that I'll never ever have another battle, that I'll never have another problem, that I, everything's just going to be smooth because God's going to look after me and, and you know, everything's going to be right. But, you know, that's not always the case. How many people have found that out? But, you know, I was just thinking this morning as I was driving here and I was, uh, I was just thinking, you know, I don't know, movies and things like that. I don't know much about war. I was a 98-day wonder. I went to national service and uh, that was my, the length and breadth of my thing. But, but I've seen a lot of war movies and, and you know, there's times there when, when you know, the, the, you, you see the guy who'd say, get on the radio and he'd say to the, to the control tower, we're under heavy fire. We're under heavy fire. See, when, when Christians, as Christians, we say these things, I'm being attacked, or, or that, and we think because we're being attacked, that there must be something wrong with God, or there must be something wrong with me, or, and, you know, we get all this sometimes a wrong concept that gets around our lives. But I want to tell you, friends, you are in a war, and it's, if I can say it like this, you will come under attack. You will be attacked because the enemy wants to rob from you. He wants to kill you. He wants to destroy the purpose and plan that God has for your life. But you see, with, the, with these soldiers, what they do is, is they get on the radio and they speak to the command tower or whoever it is, and they say, we are under attack. This is where we're situated. We need help. And I want to say this, that we as Christians, we have got a mighty force that we can contact. And we can say, hey, Lord, we're under attack. And this is what's going on, and this is what's happening, and we need help. And you see, what happens there in the natural is that you see some of those, uh, what do you call them, those hawk things, what do you call them? What are those, you know, what do you call them, those helicopters? What are they? Black hawks. Black hawks, you know, half a dozen of them come through with scud missiles and... <laughs> And they blast the enemy out and, of course, then another helicopter comes in and picks them up and away they go and they're saved. But we've got even a greater thing than that, amen? See, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. And that's we've got this communication. And in the prayer meeting today as we started to pray, I just got this revelation or, or, or was challenged by, have you got any idea who you're talking to? You know, sometimes we talk to God like as if it's too hard for him to even do it. But have you got any idea who you're actually talking to? The great I am, the all-powerful, the mighty, the omnipotent, the, the amazing, the, the never lost a battle in his life, God. Amen. That can make everything out of nothing. That, that is so powerful and so... Ooh. You know, more powerful than a black hawk, more power. And he can send ministering angels and he can uh, send spiritual weapons and he can come in and destroy that thing that's coming against your life. But you see, if we're, if we're just sitting there saying, oh, by God, I'm being attacked, I, uh, you know, and we, and we get a defeatist attitude, I want to tell you, you will never win. But we've got to know that if God be for me, who can be against me? If my God be for me, who can be against me? Our God reigns, amen. And our God is for us and God wants to destroy all of our enemies. 
No weapon formed against us will prosper. And sometimes I, I feel like as if I'm like a broken record, but I believe faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the Word of God. Amen? And faith, the Word of God is like a hammer. And the hammer will come and it will break this, the unbelief around our heart. It will break the lies that have been sown into our lives. It will break the strongholds that the enemy or the plan or the, or the, the web that is built around your life to stop you from becoming who God wants you to become. And so today I want to just share some things that, that I believe will help us in, in, our, in what we want to do for God. Psalm 78 verse 41, it says this, it says, Yes again and again they tempted God. They kept tempting God. They limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited the Holy One of Israel. When God wanted to bless, they turned away. Verse 42, it says, They did not remember His power. They did not remember His power. The word power there literally means they did not remember His hand. His hand of blessing that was outstretched towards them. Their hand of blessing that wanted to, to, to provide for them, that wanted to meet with them, that wanted to help them. They limited the Holy One of Israel. They forgot who He was and sometimes as Christians, when we're going through some things, we can forget who God really is. But I want to remind us today that our God is all-powerful. Do you believe that today? That it, there's nothing too hard for our God. There's nothing too difficult for Him. So these people limited and they did not remember. that His hand of provision was stretched out towards them. I've said it before and I'll say it again. We must revisit the victories we have personally encountered in our lives so as that we don't forget. Friend, don't forget what God's done for you. Don't forget the great victories that God has won in your life. Forget what the enemy of faith wants to focus on. We can focus on, wow, I'm under attack. We can focus on, I've, I've had this, and, or I've had the flu, or goodness knows what. But I want to tell you, greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world if we stir up the gifting, if we stir up that which is on the inside of us and start saying, my God says, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. My God says, let the weak say they are strong. Let the poor say I am rich. You might have had a bad deal. You might have had a bad time. You might have had some things that have gone wrong. But I want to tell you, our God before us, who can be against us? Focus on God's mighty power, God's outstretched hand. You've got to see that God is for us. God wants to bless us. The Bible says in John, it says, I wish above all things that you'd be prosperous and in good health. But you see, if the enemy can rob from me, if he can rob my testimony, if, if he can get me to forget who I am and what I'm, what's about, I will forget. But we must remember the name of the Lord. The righteous run into the name. Amen. We've got to remember the name which is above every name. King David had to strengthen himself in the Lord. I don't know about you. Ever, have you ever had to strengthen yourself in the Lord? If you ever had to get hold of a scripture and just re uh, visit it, revisit it, revisit it, revisit it, keep saying it and saying it and saying it. Not like a parrot, but until it gets inside of you. Because, friend, if you, if you allow the enemy, and, and I guess if we really listen to what we're saying, sometimes we understand why we can be defeated. The Bible says, you know, that in one, uh, sorry, 1 Samuel 30, verse 6, how David strengthened himself in the Lord. Right from the get-go, right from the very beginning of his life, David had to fight. Right from the very, very beginning, he had to fight. He had to fight rejection. He had to fight intimidation. He had to fight negativity. He had to fight lies. He had to uh, uh, fight betrayal. He had to fight disappointment. He had to fight failure and much, much more. You see it? I believe that there is a fight, that we are in a war, and we've got to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. You see, this young man, as a young boy, he had to strengthen himself in his God. He had to remind himself of who his God was. In 1 Samuel 16, verse 1, and, 
And I know we've, we've gone over some of these things many times, but I just want to keep going over it and over it because for me, I believe that if we're going to enter into what God has us and wants us to enter into, I believe that we've got to be able to be this voice of one crying out in the wilderness. I believe that God has got a people that he wants to use mightily. But I know that the enemy will come and try to stop us, do whatever he can. Amen. But I want to tell you, he's not going to win. Because we're going to keep reminding ourselves. We're going to keep remembering the Lord. Amen. We're going to keep remem remembering what God has done for us. In, in uh, 1 Samuel 16, uh, verse 7, verse 1 rather, we'll start there. And the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil uh, and go. I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. So Samuel goes out and Samuel goes to look for this man. In 16 verse 7, it says, Don't look at his appearance. For the Lord does not see as man sees. God looks at the heart. You know, here, here's Jesse's got eight sons. And as, as the sons are, are, are there and as Jesse comes, as Samuel comes into Jesse's house and said, you know, I want, want to see your sons. You know, the young boy was not even considered. And you know, sometimes in our lives we might not, never have been considered. We might not have even, you know, got in the team. I don't know what it might be, but it looks like if you got passed by. I want to tell you, if your heart is right towards God, God will raise you up. God will have his way in your life. He's got a purpose and a plan for your life. Don't look at the outside. And we know that there, as Jesse brought his sons in, they would have been strong and powerful. Goodness knows what. And one after one, Jesse said, no, this is not, uh, sorry, Samuel said, this is not the one. This is not the one. And when he'd gone through the seven, he said, Where, is there no more? He said, yeah, I've got a young fellow out in the paddock. He said, well, we're not going anywhere until you bring him in. And I suppose that this young fella, while he's out on the paddock, because how many people know that the devil will always want you to hear the negatives? No matter whether you're out in the paddock or where you are, and I'm just going to use preacher's license here a little bit. But I believe as this young man's out there um, minding these sheep and looking after the sheep, there'll be certain servants that of the household that would have come past and they would have said, oh man, there's something going on up in the house. <laughs> The prophet of God is there and, and he's got a big uh, horn of oil and he's going to anoint somebody to be king over Israel. There's something good over there and one of, one of, your, one of your brothers uh, is going to be the one, one of Jesse's households. And I would I'd imagine there that in, in his own heart there would have been, oh, you know, I wish I was up there. I would love to be there watching what's going on. Because you see, this young man had a heart after God. He wanted to be where God was and here's the prophet and he's out there now. He's, he's got to look after these sheep. And, and you know, that, that thing would have got, in, that rejection would have got on the inside of him. Friend, I want to tell you, one of the great weapons of the enemy is rejection. Can get on the end. But you've got to understand that God's saying, I'm not looking at the outside. Don't be worried about what people are saying. Let me be the one that raises you up. Amen. Let me be the one that will take you to the place that I want to take you to. And we know there that as he was out there, he wasn't even considered. But all of a sudden, one of the servants from the house comes and says, Come quickly, you need it up there. And as he goes up there and he stood before this great man of God, this, this great prophet of God who is known throughout the region as God's man of hour for the power. Power for the hour, I'll tell you the way. <laughs> And here he was there, and as he would have, I would imagine that this young boy would have come in trembling. I've stood before some of the, the big guys, the, the, the prophets. I remember one prophet there, I shook like a leaf because he was renowned as a prophet. And, uh, you know, and, and coming into his presence, you're just, you're just awestruck. I would imagine that this young man would have just been awestruck as he was there. And as the guy, as, as the prophet looked at him, he says, you're the one. And as he went there and as he poured the oil over him, what a great day that would have been. What an amazing day. And, and, and anointed him to be king. But he had to go through some things to become what God wants him to become. I, I don't know what was going on in his mind, but, 
But that's what happened. In 1 Samuel 17 verse 1, the Philistines gathered their armies again to come against the children of God. Here's this young man. He's still out minding sheep. He's waiting for the time. And can I say this? That you may be anointed for a time. You are anointed for a season. You're anointed. I don't know whether it's now or tomorrow, but all I know is that God is going to raise us up in this day that we're living in. Somewhere, somehow, God will have his way. I do not believe for one minute that God is gathering eagles like he's gathering in this place for no other reason. People will come and they might laugh at us. People might say some things about us that will bring us, cause us pain or hurt us. But I want to tell you, God has got a purpose and a plan. And I believe that even though we might be still out minding a few sheep, we might be still look like we're not going anywhere, doing much. I want to tell you on the day when God wants to, he's going to raise us up and we're going to be a voice to be reckoned with in Jesus' name. I believe that with every fiber of my being. And here is this young man now, and the Philistines gathered again. Saul and his armies went out to battle. The mighty army of God. What happened to them? They forgot their God, and they relied on their own ability. As this Goliath was in the the valley screaming out and shouting out and spitting uh, threats and, and goodness knows what else. And 1 Samuel 17 and 11, it says, And when Saul and all Israel heard these words, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. What happens is they forgot their God. They forgot their God. They forgot what God could do for them. They were dreadfully afraid in verse 24. Jesse's eight sons, three of his elder sons, went to war with Saul. They were out there in the battle. Jesse sent... David out to see how the battle was going. This is where I really want to pick the story up. Sent David, 1 Samuel 17, verse 26. And David spoke to the men who stood by him. This is as young David, I I believe, innocently. Can I, can I say that here he is, he's, he's excited for his brothers. He's, he's excited because this young man, somehow or other in his life, has established who God really is. He knows God, amen? He spent time with God. He, somehow or other, he had a relationship with God. How many people know that relationship with God is the most important thing any man can ever have? Any person on this planet having a relationship with God. He knew. He talked to God. He saw God do things. And here he is. He comes innocently. And he's he's got some cheeses and he's got some things and and he's bringing up to the battlefield. And as as he comes into this battlefield, he hears a Goliath as as he rorts and he rants and he carries on. And all of a sudden, he sees in his brother's eyes and he sees in the children of Israel the mighty army of God, the, 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 the people of God who should be standing up and being strong. All of a sudden, they're running into their caves and they're, and they're hiding and, and fear and trembling comes upon their lives. And he senses in his spirit that there's something amiss. Sometimes we can focus on you know, what shall be done for the man who does this. But I want to focus on something else. I want to focus on a young man who knew his God. And a young man who spoke words that were so powerful. And David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Phil- Philistines and takes away the reproach from Israel? This is what it, what it says. It says, For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God. See, that was the thing. That was the thing that really, it wasn't so much everybody had heard, yeah, you get this and you get that, but nobody was willing to stand up. Nobody knew their God the way this young man knew his God. And there was something about him, there was a tenacity about him. And he, and, he, and he spoke these words, For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in this manner, saying, So shall it be done for the man who kills him. Now his brother, his older brother, when he heard, spoke to the men, and his anger was arisen 
I want to tell you, friends, nothing will get people more angry than when you start to speak the Word of God. You know, a lot of people today, in the church even, they do not want to hear what God has to say about a matter. They want to base themselves in their own self-pity, in their own whatever it might be, so that they can feel comfortable in their lack and in their failure. Don't, don't, don't challenge me to rise up. Don't challenge me to believe God. Don't challenge us to, to, to say that. No, no, here's a Goliath down there. And, and, and you know, and so here is this guy and, 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 his, and his anger was arose against David. And this is in verse 28. Why have you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and your insolence of heart, for you've come to, down to see the battle. You know, I don't know about you, but it doesn't take much to take the sharpness of a knife. It doesn't take much sometimes to bring discouragement to a champion. It doesn't take much sometimes to stop a move of God. It doesn't take much sometimes to stop the purpose of God. Because David, David was there and is listening to his older brother who he would have respected and honored and loved and, and goodness knows what. And here is his brother's anger pouring out on him. Who? Pulling him down. Who's looking after those few sheep? You're a nothing. You're a nobody. You're, you're nothing. You only look after a few sheep. Who do you think you are? You know, right then, David could have said, you know, you're right. You're right. I have come down just to see the battle. You're right. You're right. And he could have, you know, picked up his bag of troubles and went home. But I praise God that young David, he didn't allow the intimidation. He didn't allow what the enemy was doing to him to stop him from the purpose and the plan that God had for his life. And I pray today that you and I, this church, we will not listen to the rumors or the murmurs or the complaining or whatever it is, but we will know that we are here because God has brought us here for a purpose and for a plan and that we will rise up and we will speak. And just like David, he said, hey, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Friend, I want to tell you, there is a cause. The church is going off the rails like a locomotive at a hundred mile an hour. There are things that are going on in the body of Christ today that blows your mind. Unbelief, negativity, I don't know. The Holy Spirit has been pushed out the door. The church that meets before us puts the Holy Spirit in the cupboard. They heard me talking one day when I was putting out the chairs. Shadabundi, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. The guy said to me, he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm just calling on the Holy Spirit. He said, oh, he said, we just put him in the cupboard. I said, would you get him out? We need him. <laughs> and you see, we've got things now that, that take away the, the reality and the, and the fullness and the, and the power. People forget God. We've got to be reminded of this God that we serve, this almighty God that we serve. He's powerful, all powerful. What an amazing... So Is there not a cause, he says... Is there not a cause? Then the Bible says in verse 31, it says, Now when these words which David spoke were heard, words are so powerful. You know, what words were they looking for? They weren't looking for, you're right, I am a failure, I'm a nobody. 
And much of the church can have this false humility that goes around and, and speaking negativity and I'm a nobody. Friend, I want to tell you, I'm a child of the Most High God. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. Hallelujah. We are royalty. Amen. We are children of the Most High God. We are the anointed vessels that God is going to pour out upon this nation called Australia, the great south land of the Holy Ghost. This Holy Ghost power has to be poured out. This nation of Australia Australia needs a double dose of the Holy Ghost. Needs a fresh outpouring. We were saying that will blow the wind again or whatever it was. Jody was singing it there and the band was singing it. What an amazing song. What, suck that in, amen. <laughs> I can't remember the words. Come like a rush. Come on, lift up your hands. Come on, come like a rushing wind, Lord. Suck it in. <laughs> Fan the fire again. <laughs> oh, glory. what an amazing song that is, amen. Come like a rush, mighty rushing wind. Fan the flame again, Lord. Burst that we might burst into flame in Jesus' name. What an amazing thing. Now, when they heard the words which David spoke, When these words were heard, something was going on. What was David saying? He was saying, for who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should, that he should defy the armies of a living God? You see, Dagon's God, uh, Goliath's God was Dagon, a dead God. Verse 32. I don't know where I am now. I better have a bit of a look here. <laughs> Chakabundi. Everybody here with me? 32, let, and, and, and David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Here's young David, young David now, he's pumped. You ever been pumped for the Holy Ghost? Ever, ever got pumped? John and Betty came to the prayer meeting uh, for the first time the other Tuesday night. And, they, and I rang him up and said, great to see you there. And he said, man, we went home pumped. <laughs> that was, I don't know, you mightn't use those words, but that's not my word. We went home pumped. We went home pumped. And here's this young fella now. He said, how dare this? And then his brother comes and slaps him up the side of the head. And he said, is there another cause? <laughs> he swore his brother back away. You know, there's nothing that'll make the devil back away more than the Holy Ghost. You know what, sometimes it could be your brother, it could be your best friend, it could be your uncle, your auntie, your son, your daughter. Speak words that aren't going to bring you anywhere. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? And here he is, he's pumped. He's pumped. He's ready to go. He said, don't let any man's heart fail him. I'll fight that thing. <laughs> And he, inside him, he wasn't, wasn't coming out perhaps, but he knew that greater was he that was within him than he that was in Goliath. Because Goliath was serving a dead God, but he was serving a living God. And he was serving a God that could answer by fire. And he could serve a God that could bring down any Goliath and any giant and anything that would come against him. He, read, he knew that no weapon formed against him could prosper. He knew that the devil had no chance. Hey, let no man's heart fail, because he could see all the guys' hearts were failing him. They walk up, running. What are we going to do? Get on the phone. Hey, we're under attack. Send a couple of scud missiles. <laughs> Come on. Here he is, pumped. And is, who's he standing? Can you get, no, come on, you've got to get the scene. Now he's standing before the king. He, how do you think he would have been standing in front of the king? And the king, who was a, who was a champion, the, the great warrior, Saul, the great man of God, the anointed one, the one there that was, that was so powerful and so strong and everything like that. And, the, and Saul looks at him and says, you can't fight him. You're right. I can't fight him. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Look at the size of me. I'm only a kid. Look at me. I, I'm nobody. Look at me. I'm 65, 75, 85, 83, 82, whatever you want to be. <laughs> 
38. <laughs> you're right, you're right, I'm, a, I'm just a kid. I don't have any training, I don't have any weapons. I don't have this, I don't have that. I don't, I don't. But did he say that? No. What did he do? He remembered the Lord. He remembered his God, amen. He remembered his God and he said, Hey, king, listen to me. <laughs> when I was out in the paddock, a lion came to try to steal one of my few sheep. <laughs> and I went after it. I went after that thing. I grabbed it by the beard and I slapped it up the side of the head and he let go my little lamb. I overcame that thing. And then a bear came and tried to do the same. And I went after him and I got back that little lamb. I want to tell you the same God that delivered me from the lion and the bear. He's the same God that's going to deliver me from the paws, from the hand of this Philistine. Ooh. You, if you don't remember the Lord, you'll go down the gurgler. The devil wants to pull the chain on you, but God wants to lift you up. God wants to lift you out. God wants to lift you up. You can't do it. You can't do it. Yeah, hey, listen, remember what God did. Then in verse 43, it comes there when, when, when David now, he's got the okay, go out there. What does he do? He goes and gets five little stones. He's got a little slingshot in his hand. He goes out there and straightway, the Goliath says, do you think I'm a dog? And starts pulling him down. Look at you. You're a nobody. You're a nothing. I am humiliated that they would send such a dog to come and get me. I'm going to do this to you, and I'm going to do that to you, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do all these things. But David reminded himself, verse 45, if we can find it. And David said to the Philistine, friend, can I say this? Words are powerful. What are you saying to the things that are standing against you? Are you submitting to them? Are you accepting them? Or are you saying, you will come down? You will come down, amen. And friend, I want to tell you, there's a lot of enemies trying to attack. But there's one source, the mighty power of God that will deliver us in Jesus' name, amen. David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you, and I will take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcass of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God on the Sunshine Coast. Amen. Am I a dog? You know, amazing thing. A lot of things stop people. What stopped the children of Israel from entering into Canaan, the promised land? A land flowing with milk and honey. What, what stopped them from going in and taking all the promises? See, I believe that we, the church, are like the children of Israel. God has given us precious promises that he wants us to go in and take hold of. And like the children of Israel, what stops us? You know, it wasn't the giants in the land. It wasn't the walled cities that stopped the children of Israel from going in to the promises of God. What stopped them from going in was ten of them forgot who their God was. If we forget who our God is, we will not enter in to the revival that God has promised us. We'll just be another church. But oh my God, I pray that while we've got breath, that we will hammer out 
and speak the word of God and challenge and break strongholds and stop the enemy. Yes, we will. Ten of the spies forgot God, how he delivered them from the hand of Pharaoh. Only Joshua and Caleb remembered what stops a present-day church from entering into the promise of God. We forget. We forget. We, we, we stir ourselves up. We get excited about things, and then the enemy comes in to, to take the carpet out from underneath us. We fall on our face and get, it, get into the pity and hurt and brokenness. And I believe it's time to call upon the scud missiles. We're talking the other night, I think, at, the, at Chris's meeting there before it started, talking about how I, I was praying for a young girl in India that had an eye that looked like a goldfish eye. It was sticking out about that far. What, it, was, it was horrible. And it, they brought her up to me. I put my hand over her eye like that because I didn't want to put my hand on the eye. I, that's how I had to pray for her like that. When I took my hand from her face, her eye was totally 100% healed, totally delivered, totally free. I've got to remember the move of God. I've got to remember watching crowds of five to 700 people just getting slain in the spirit as you put your arm out like that. People just getting touched by the anointing. Yes, sometimes we've been robbed, but I want to tell you, we're going to remember the name of the Lord and we're going to stir again the gifts and we're going to keep stirring it and we're going to keep talking about the, how magnificent our God is. I remember we went to Kempsey to do a New South Wales pastors conference. They put a big tent up. It was going to be an amazing event. The night before we got there, there was like an amazing storm went through and blew the tent down and tore it to shreds. We got there and here's the tent on the floor. And they said, what are we going to do? I said, I don't know, but we're going to have a meeting. <laughs> and we gathered together, I forget, under a tree or something like that. And the presence of God came down. People got excited. The anointing was there. Then we had meetings under there the next day. And that night, the, there was a guy there who said, hey, he said, there's an old theater up the road there. And I went and saw the guy. It's condemned, but he said, we can use it. <laughs> and we went in there and we started. We had all this, it was a, you know, this great big auditorium thing. And we we're there and it was one that steps went up like this. And, and there was, we began to worship and we began to praise and the people were excited. And I want to tell you, there's nothing better than getting with a bunch of excited people. Dead don't praise God. Get with a bunch of excited people. I want to tell you, we're going to have to start getting a bit more excited around here. Amen? And I'm not just saying let's do it in the flesh, but, but let's let the Spirit of God get hold of us and do something on the inside of us that we can't contain ourselves. Can't contain ourselves. And, and we were there in this, in this Kempsey place and, and, and we were worshipping and the presence of God came down in that place. It was amazing. Just a, and there was a lady there that had degenerated hips and uh, she had calipers on her legs and she had this, this uh, what do you call it, these, this walking stick and, and she used to walk like this. That's how she, that's how she came in. And, and all, as she came into the meeting, the power of God hit her. She threw her crutches in the air. She threw them away. She pulled off those calibers and she started running up and down the steps, round and round and round. She was screaming. The people started shouting. There was a noise going on in that place. There was such a racket. People were dancing. People were shouting that the person that gave us the building was living underneath. And the story comes back to us later that the crockery in his dresser was bouncing out of the, out of the, out of the thing. And he's got his hands trying to get down. And next minute he looked around and his TV was starting to move, going across the hall. And he's got his foot on his television and he's trying to, and, and he said, these people up here are crazy. And there was shouting. Man, it was just amazing. The atmosphere was electric. The presence of God, people were getting healed. People were coming alive. It was anointed. And he thought, I've got to do something to stop them. You've got to imagine, we were getting attacked. We had the tent blown down. We had this going and all the things were happening. And, and the man said, I know what I'll do. In his mind, he said, I'll turn the lights off. 
So he turned the lights off. And what do we think? It's another attack. We shouted the louder. <laughs> they just kept dancing and shouting and it was on. The guys, everything in his house is boom, 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 boom. You got to remember, we almost demolished this place for the demolishers. <laughs> Then he said, after a few minutes, he said, that didn't work. He said, I'll turn the lights back on. So he turned the lights back on. Everybody thought, hey, God, turn the lights on. <laughs> oh, light the fire again. Stand with me, come on. Light the fire again. Musicians, can you take your place? Light the fire again. Light the fire again. Oh, just like a rushing wind. Oh, be by hand, oh. Friend, never, never forget your God. Never forget your God. Never forget God. Oh, sorry. Never forget God. Children of Israel, they forgot their God. Friend, can I say this? His hand is outstretched towards you. Meryl, God's hand is outstretched before you. If you can believe that He will go before you, He will open a Red Sea. He will make a way where there is no way. Only turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and allow every enemy of yours to come down. Let it be pulled down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you, this thing is not meant to come to destroy you. It's come to build you. It's come to show that your God is greater than anything that would come against you. It will cause you to rise up and be strong and to be counted in this hour. I want to tell you that if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. Amen. Come on. There's other people in this place right now. Now, you need to know that if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. God is for us. Hallelujah. Come on. I know that there's people here that have been attacked. I know that there's people here that have, that have had the enemy come chasing after you. But I want to tell you, friends, the Bible says if you resist the devil, he will flee from you. He will come at you one way and he will run from you seven ways. I want to tell you that God be for us. Who can be against us? We're going to sing how great thou art. Is that all right? Come on, how great is our God? How great is our God? I don't know about you, but I, t I believe there's a time to, to let God be God. If you're in this house today and you need to have that breakthrough, you need to have that release. You know, you know, you know that God is talking to you today. Don't sit back there with white knuckles. Don't sit back there and say, oh, well, another day. Don't sit back and say this and that. I, don't, I want to tell you, friends, respond to God in Jesus' name. Remember your God today. The Bible says one shall put to flight 1,000, two shall put to flight 10. Prayer of agreement is very important. Words that you speak are very important. Many people are snared by their own words. They're trapped in the snare of the fowl. But God wants to deliver you today. You're in this place today and you need a breakthrough. You need that touch. Something has clicked. Something has touched. I just want to open this altar to you. Don't, don't let this moment pass you by, friend. I believe that this is a solemn moment. And it is a time to respond to the, to the preaching of the Word. Signs and wonders and miracles accompany, follow the preaching of the Word. I believe I preached the Word of God today. Come, don't hold back. I just feel to, to encourage you, don't stop. Just slip out of your seat and come.